Welcome back to another day of college algebra, everyone. So I hope you're doing well. We're going to talk today about lesson 8.4. If you haven't already, you need to look at the rubric. Okay, do that now. This video and tomorrow's video is going to be all about uh, a lot of the level 2 stuff there. Okay, uh, that has to do with factoring, the quadratic formula. Um, really what we're trying to get at, guys, is this idea that if we have a parabola... Oftentimes, we are very interested in the x-intercepts of that parabola. What is this point and what is this point? Those are called x-intercepts. We are also interested in the y-intercept a lot of times, and we're also very interested in the vertex. Okay. Now, today's lesson is going to be all about how do we calculate the x-intercepts? How do we find these values here? And one of the things I just want to make sure you understand is... At the x-intercepts, if you think of the ordered pairs, okay, that first number is the x-intercept, that's the x value. The second number in the ordered pair is always zero, all right? So whatever this ordered pair is, the second one is always zero. So the x-intercepts is when the y value is zero, when the function value is zero. So keep that in mind as we go through today. All right. All right, we are going to begin by um, looking at factoring, okay? Now, I should point out, I've also point, posted uh, some notes that I had from previous years. I didn't really do much to them, but I put them out there so you guys could see some of the things that I talked through with my classes and some of the, um, some of the work that was done, some of the practice problems. So use that uh, however you see fit. Hopefully, you can gain something from that. But the first thing I want to talk to you about is one method to find those x-intercepts. And that method is factoring. Okay, There are really two methods. Maybe I'll mention the other one right now. The second method is that beloved quadratic formula. We'll talk about that here today as well. Okay, Two methods. We're going to do factoring first. So I'm actually going to be doing number 3b from lesson 8.4 problem set. Uh, the directions say factor uh, the quadratic formula, or sorry, factor the quadratic function and then graph it. Graphing is another thing that you're gonna need to be able to do by hand. So I wanna give you a few thoughts on that. So the equation is z equals three x squared minus six x minus nine, okay? So if we're gonna factor this, uh, the first thing we look for is to take out a greatest common factor. We look in all the terms, is there a greatest common factor? In this case, yes, there is. 3 is a greatest common factor. And when you take out the 3 from every one of those terms, you're left with this trinomial. And now we're going to do reverse FOIL to think about uh, what that should factor into. These are going to be two binomials that when you do your FOILing should take you back up to there. So you can always know if your factoring is right by going backwards and saying, if I multiply that out, do I get back to what I started with? Okay, X times an X is going to give you X squared. So that's what we start with here. What are two numbers that multiply to be negative 3 and that add up to be negative 2? Well, minus 3 and plus 1. Okay, so here's what I mean about going back to check. X times X is X squared. X times 1 is 1X. Negative 3 times x is negative 3x. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. These two add up to be negative 2x. That's the minus 3, and we already said that was the 1x squared. Okay, that is what we started with. So we know we have the correct factoring. <clears throat> it gets a little harder uh, when you have a leading coefficient that's not 1. Um, I can maybe talk through that on Tuesday, some examples of that uh, during our Google Hangout time, if you would like. So once we're here, we have put this in factored form. Uh, that's kind of all they wanted us to do technically. But I want to just show you really what, what this is leading to mostly. Most of the time, what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, what is 
what are the zeros of this function? Zeros is another name for the x-intercepts. So where does this function cross the x-axis? And what, what we said up here, remember, we said where the y values are zero. So in this case, really, this should have been like a y. I don't know why they use z. That's our y value, okay? So where is that zero? So we're setting zero equal to this function. And when you have it in factored form, you can use something called the zero product property. You should have heard of that before, algebra one, probably in algebra two as well. The zero product property uh, can be applied here to solve for x. It says that if you have things that are multiplied together to get zero, the only way that can happen is if one or both of them is zero. So you just say, well, I'm gonna check when each one of them would be zero. So I'm gonna take that factor, set it equal to zero, add three to both sides, and I get three equals x, okay? That's one of my x-intercepts. Uh, the other one, zero equals the x plus one, and x equals negative one. That's my other x-intercept. So I know negative one right here and three, those are my x-intercepts, okay? So as I try and graph this, that's a really nice thing to know. I know two points already, okay? Now, what do I do from here? Well, when you're graphing any quadratic equation by hand, um, I'm just gonna take this back to here just to, to create some space. When you're graphing any quadratic by hand, um, you can always use a t-chart. Okay, don't forget about this tool that you guys have. Pick a number for x to plug in and solve for y. I know, probably zero would be a pretty easy one to, to put in, right? Especially if you know these are your x uh, intercepts, you know your parabola is going to have to be somewhere between there. So pick zero, one, or two. Those would be, you know, helpful, easy ones to get. Maybe even negative two or four. X values that are close to those intercepts would usually be good choices. And so when you plug zero in, well, that pretty easy, zero, zero, negative nine. That's your y-intercept. So two, four, six, eight, nine, right there. So you know it goes down to there. Um, here's the thought. <clears throat> your uh, vertex, right? We know how to find the vertex, right? X equals negative B over 2A. Use that. Another idea. Uh, remember, we've talked about axis of symmetry a little bit. The axis of symmetry is always going to be right in the middle of your two x-intercepts. Okay, because a parabola is symmetric, wherever your x-intercepts are, if you find the point exactly in the middle of those, in this case, between negative 1 and 3, that's at negative 1. Or sorry, that's at 1. So x equals 1 is your axis of symmetry. And the vertex is always on the axis of symmetry. So once you find that, and you would get the same thing if you did negative b over 2a, that gives you your axis of symmetry. Okay. Once you find that, I'm going to put my negative 1 in. So I'm going to do 3 times negative 1 squared minus 6 times negative 1. Why did I put a negative 1? I meant 1. Our axis of symmetry is 1, not negative 1. Sorry about that. So 1 squared is 1 times 3 is 3, minus 6, minus 9. That gives us negative 3 minus 9, which is negative 12. And so down here at, negative, at 1, negative 12, that is our vertex. Okay. And so we have this really skinny parabola. Okay. But that's what happens when we have an A value that's larger than 1. It, it's, it makes it skinnier. Okay. And it's opening up. So... That's one uh, thought process on how to do some graphing by hand. Hopefully that helps you guys a little bit. All right, let me take and do the quadratic formula with you. And then I have one other question to look at, okay? So what happens if we took that same y equals 3x squared minus 6x minus 9 and put in it in the quadratic formula, okay? The quadratic formula, 
x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So uh, remember, this is your a, this is your b, this is your c. You have to have the equation in standard form before you can use the quadratic formula. And then we plug it in. So negative b, the opposite of negative 6. Obviously, that's going to turn into positive 6. Plus or minus the square root of negative 6 squared minus 4 times 3 times negative 9 all over 2 times 3. Okay, hopefully you guys are good at simplifying this. Um, use your calculator. Now when you, when you do this part here, if you remember, this right here is called the discriminant. You talked about that in Algebra 2. The discriminant tells you how many roots there are going to be, how many zeros you're going to have, right? If that's positive, you're going to have two roots. If that's zero, you're going to have one root. If it is a negative number, we're going to have some imaginary roots. Okay, and we'll talk about that more in the next video. So in this case, it comes out to 144. Uh, notice, because that's a, a perfect square, the square root of that comes out nice. And then you get 6 plus 12 divided by 6. So there's your 3. And then you get 6 minus 12, which is negative 6 divided by 6. That's your negative 1. Okay. So this way always gives you roots, regardless of if this can be factored or not. You need to know both methods, um, but there you have it. Finds the, uh, the roots, the x-intercepts as well. One last question here. Thanks for hanging in there with me. Uh, I would like to uh, basically, if I gave you a question where I say the roots, again, the x-intercepts are 5, 0 and 1, 0, and the parabola goes through 4, negative 1, could you write the equation of that, All right? Different thing here. Okay, so in this chapter, they, they formally give you this form of a quadratic. I've mentioned it to you before. This is the factored form that you need to know. But notice, this right here is one of the roots. This is the other root, okay? So they're giving you those roots, okay? They don't give you the a yet, but they give you root 1, 5. So x minus 5. This one, x minus 1. If that had been negative 1, it would have been minus a negative 1. It would have been x plus 1 here. Okay. Um, so they give us that. Then if we know which point it goes through, 4, negative 1, that's an x and y coordinate that's got to be true for this equation. So we put the value in for y. We put the 4 in for x in both spots, and we solve for a. There's negative 1 times, wait, I should have put, oh, yeah, oh, my root 1 here. This should have been a 1. 4 minus 1 is 3. So 3 times negative 1 is negative 3, so I'm going to divide by negative 3. So negative one-third is A. So if I rewrite my equation, Y equals negative one-third, X minus five times X minus one. Okay, that is factored form. If you wanted to put it in standard form, you do your foiling, multiply it all out, put it in standard form. We need to be able to go from one to the next to the next. All right, I've talked long enough. See ya.